Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I know you all are going to love this one because this is a continuation in our ongoing series about promoting a high density planting approach. So in this episode, I want to talk about all the plants that we have here and the spacing that we have them at so I can show you how we are uh, planting in a high density approach for all of our other plants because I showed our lettuce, but there was a lot of questions about the other plants that we had. But I also wanted to talk about seed packets and the disservice that they are doing when it comes to plant spacing. So when it comes to spacing, oftentimes you'll see a packet uh, that will say space, let's say eight inches apart, okay? And for instance, onions, onions are recommended to space six to eight inches apart. However, what they do not tell you is that the seed packet industry actually goes by on-center planting. And what on-center planting means, it means it's actually going by the diameter of the plant. And so if six to eight inches spacing, you actually divide that by two. Because what we are doing is we're actually taking the radius. And that's what we space our plants on, is on a radius not the diameter, but a radius. Because if you space your plants out eight inches, you're going to actually have uh, tw uh, twice as few plants, so two times less plants. If you space them four inches on center, you're going to have twice as many plants, the number you should be having in a garden. And that is the whole idea behind a high density approach. It's nothing new. It's nothing crazy. There are new things that we're adding to it. Like in an organic garden, we don't have rows and things like that. So you put way more plants in, or we do have rows, but they're much, much closer together. And so because we are increasing the productivity in our garden, we are able to plant way more plants in a square foot. So coming in close, I wanna show you what I'm talking about because I think oftentimes people really get hung up on that plant spacing thing and they say, well, everyone says to space it you know, a foot apart or two feet apart. You do not have to space it two feet apart. Um, if it says two feet, it's one foot on center. And that means there's a foot and a foot. That's two feet spacing. If you have eight inches spacing, that's four inches on one side, four inches on the other, you have eight inches of space between each plant. So as I stated, I was gonna show onions first because I think this is the best example of the concept that I'm talking about, about on-center spacing. And you can see here between each plant, they have four inches, but total eight inches. So we're only spacing our plants four inches apart. Now, if you were to space it eight inches apart, Imagine this plant isn't even here. You'd have this plant and this plant. And sadly, that's what a lot of people are doing is they're, they're spacing their stuff according to the seed packets, but they don't, they don't realize the seed packets are telling you on center. They just don't state it in the seed packets. And that's why I wish seed packets would start doing that. So we're talking about on center spacing, meaning you get a free plant. <laughs> For every two, you get a free plant. So uh, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a freebie there that so many people are missing out on. This plant, I would say probably 60, 70% of gardeners miss out on. And this plant multiplied by you know, 40 square feet or so, that really adds up. So uh, imagine this entire row here, this entire row of onions would never be here if they were planting, if they were planted based on the eight inch spacing. So that's a cool one. Let's go check out the kale. So with kale, we have 10 inch spacing between plants and that's because they have really wide leaves that, that go out very far. And so we have a plant here and a plant here. And then we have a 10 inch gap, we have a plant here. So traditional spacing would be about 20 inches. This plant right here, if you followed the seed packet spacing, this plant would never exist. So because we're planting on center, we're planting 10 inches on center you get this plant here. And so oftentimes people are over spacing their gardens. And that's why in a high intensity approach, you'll notice that the leaves shade out the soil. And so here you have soil that's, that is not being mulched, but 
let the leaves go back, it's being mulched by leaf cover, meaning the weeds can't compete. And so the weeds can't have access to sunlight. They don't have access to the water. The plants have grown up. They have access to the nutrients. They're allowed to grow in the plants and the weeds are not. So this is a great way to minimize the weeds in your garden and get extra plants that you'd normally never have. So let's move on over to the peppers. Let's check that one out. As you can see with our peppers, we have about 11 inch spacings between each plant. So they're planted in a kind of a four eyed dice pattern. What you could do is if you have, uh, these are large pepper plants. If you have some of your smaller ones like Tabasco, some of your smaller peppered plants, you can actually plant a five-eyed dice right here. Because these are bell peppers, they grow really large, have large fruits on them, and airflow is really important to have. We don't have that type of luxury, but like I said, depending on the type of pepper plant, you can plant a fifth one right here. Meaning, you not only get, uh, you not only get this row here free because this is typical spacing or i mean this is this is what people typically space their pepper plants you would not have this row but then as a bonus you also would not have a plant here and a plant here and a plant over here so you, you'd be getting another extra row that is not ever uh that is not ever thought of so having the right type of pepper plant also will increase your, your yields even more. So uh, again, this is just because we're growing a really large, really large fruiting pepper that we have to space them out in a, in a block of four instead of a block of five. Here are our tomatoes. Now, a lot of times people will try to plant their tomatoes closer, thinking that they can kind of, that they can cram them together. We've tried it before. Trust me, it does not work. You really can't space your tomatoes that close together because tomatoes need tons of airflow. But still, regardless, we are actually spacing them. These are about a one and a half times closer. So they're not, they're not twice as close. They're about one and a half times closer. So they have about a foot and a half space between each plant. And that uh, the typical spacing is two feet apart. So uh, over the course of the whole bed, we're able to fit about two more plants per bed, which is not a huge gain, but it's definitely a gain nonetheless because you don't need two feet per spacing, especially if they're spaced one and a half feet on center. And here is our zucchini. Are you gonna get the airflow that's required to let the plants dry out? Absolutely. Because of the fact that we, gr we grow in a raised bed, the plants are elevated, allowing for airflow to get underneath the leaves. They have a really good, rich soil. And so because we have the spacing, normally they say three feet spacing, one and a half feet per plant, folks. One and a half feet on center, but it's also one and a half feet on center diagonally. So remember how we talked about peppers, how you could sometimes, depending on the plant, get a, a five-eyed dice going, a five, a five a block of five. This is what we have going here. So um, in four square feet, or sorry, in 16 square feet, four by four, we actually have five plants. So that is, uh, that's basically three feet spacing, but it's a one and a half feet on center, folks. So uh, here's another amazing example. And because of this, we're actually able to get one, two, three, four, five, six extra plants. So unbelievable, unbelievable. So, all right, uh, that's another good example. Let's go over and check out the, uh, the broccoli and cabbage. This one's gonna blow your mind. This one is incredible. So this, is our broccoli and cabbage bed. Now you're probably looking at this and you're thinking, what on earth is Luke on? What is he doing to his beds? These are way too crowded. Absolutely not, folks, absolutely not. By combining our plants, we're actually able to grow broccoli and cabbage in a high density planting to where the cabbage is a low understory, the broccoli is a kind of a, a canopy, it grows up, if you will. So they don't compete for space at all because they're on two different size levels. The, the cabbage is spaced a foot and a half on center, meaning you have a foot and a half to the next plant, meaning the leaves just begin to overlap as you see, but they have plenty of room to, to create a head. They're planted a foot and a half on center and a foot and a half on center. And then in the center, we have the broccoli, which is planted a foot and a half, uh, or sorry, two feet, on center in between each cabbage plant. So you have a row of, a row of broccoli, and then just next door a row, a row of cabbage. And you can see here 
that because they are working so perfectly together, we're actually able to maximize incredible, incredible amounts of, of uh, growing space here. And they are doing fantastic. So you have the cabbage, which is just doing wonderfully. As you can see, no signs of stress whatsoever. They're not stretching for anything. They're not, they're not looking uh, stressed whatsoever. And neither is the broccoli. The broccoli is doing great. No signs of stress whatsoever. So you can see here that, you know, even though we, we did lose a plant there, um, that something happened to that one and, and we lost we lost a tiny cabbage plant. We had a planted seedling there. Th that's definitely gonna get shaded out and so is that broccoli. But had everything been healthy, every, not everything is always perfect here. Had everything been really healthy, it would have been just a solid wall of, of green. So uh, again, this is shading out the soil. It's preventing evaporation. It's keeping the soil cooler. It is also um, not allowing weeds to grow. It is uh, using the nutrients in the soil to grow rather than to compete with weeds. And it's actually benefiting from each other because the broccoli is shading the cabbage. The broccoli is an earlier maturing vegetable, meaning when the broccoli matures, we'll cut the broccoli, harvest that, and then allow the cabbage to finish growing once the cabbage leaves are fully grown. So uh, this, is a perfect, uh, this is a perfect example of just how close things can be and how um, in a normal garden, this would be considered absolutely insane. So there you go, there is how to plant on center and also a overview of our densely planted garden. Hopefully you all enjoyed, hopefully you were inspired to try this. And even though it might be a little bit late for some people, it's, a, it's okay, you can learn for next year. And that's what I, you know, that's what I always say. I, I see so many people discouraged in the comments saying, man, I wish you would have done a video on this sooner. Well, I'm sorry, but I can only do a video as fast as I can do a video. And sometimes it's too late for some people, but take that information if you can't throw a couple plants in there now, take the information and apply it next year. And, and the videos don't go away, folks. So um, add them to your safe playlist or, or pin them to your, your Pinterest boards or whatever you, whatever you guys like to do to keep the, uh, to keep the videos in the, you know, the, in the back of your mind until they're relevant again. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Please do remember to like this video. That helps us out a ton. I don't like to, to repeat myself, but if there's one thing I can repeat, please like this video. It is a massive, massive help to get these videos out and share them with more people. And YouTube likes to see you interacting with our videos. And if you did like this video, comment below and tell me what you liked. I really do appreciate that as well. It helps me out as a creator. So to help you uh, to, to get more videos like this and uh, more content that you enjoy. So as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. See ya. Bye.